Welcome back to Fight Network. Cody Saftik here with you. Bellator 176 goes down Saturday, April 8th from Torino, Italy. And if MMA isn't your thing, fear not, as the promotion will also be holding another installment of Bellator Kickboxing. And joining us now on the line is a man that if you don't know him in the world of kickboxing, you must absolutely know him. He's an absolute legend in the sport of Muay Thai. It's the gunslinger John Wayne Parr. John, thanks for taking the time and joining us today. Mate, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, you've been teasing a potential signing with Bellator dating back to 2016 now, and fans were definitely pleasantly surprised to see that you officially put pen to paper. So I got to ask you, how did this deal ultimately come together for yourself? Uh, I was very lucky to uh, get, be on a conference call with Scott Coker and my friend Hans Mollenkamp from uh, Triumph United. He, uh, they, they politely asked me if I'd like to join the promotion, and uh, I grabbed it with both hands because it's such a massive opportunity to fight in such a big promotion, uh, well-established promotion. So uh, uh, I've been fighting a lot here in Australia the last few years. Uh, before that, I was fighting on the big shows in, in Japan on the K1 in front of uh, 20,000 people. Uh, so it, it's good to be back. It's good to be amongst the, the elite again. Absolutely. Well, we definitely like seeing you watching on you on the Bunchu Cup as well. But you're widely credited as one of the greatest Western Muay Thai fighters of all time. You're also a gym owner, a teacher, and you're a fighter with 96 recorded wins under your belt. Although I'm sure with uh, record counters, you could have well easily over 96. But now at age 40, is there anything left to prove? Is there anything that you still want to accomplish? Or is this strictly for the love of the sport? The love of doing something that you've done for so long, you've been so great at? Uh, yeah, it's more more for love. It, I definitely um, I, I don't want to stop because I it's just so much enjoyment. Waking up in the morning, uh, doing my big runs, hitting the pads, sparring the young guys, and just having that goal, knowing that in four weeks' time, six weeks' time, that there's an opportunity to to hopefully uh, travel internationally to represent my country in, in, in a sport that I I'm very blessed to be good at. So yeah, the more people I can fight, and then. It's also creating that legacy. Uh, the, the more that I can fight and the more that I can win, uh, the more that I can raise my profile. So hopefully when the, when the day comes, not only I retire, but the day that when I, I, I pass away, that um, I hopefully I'll be remembered as one of Australia's greatest Oh, well, I have to assume that you're going to be remembered as one of Australia's greatest. As I mentioned, 96 wins. You're a 10-time world champion and three-time voted fighter of the year. Definitely a legend, especially dating back to your time at Lumpany Stadium. You, you've already accomplished so much in the world of Muay Thai, but now you're trying to coming over to the world of kickboxing. And for a lot of the audience members that might not be familiar, obviously there are some distinctive differences between Muay Thai and kickboxing. Do you think that will affect anything about your game in particular? Uh, no. Uh, I'm... I, I uh, retired from Muay Thai in 2001, and um, I boxed for uh, approximately a, a year and a half. I had I had 13 pro boxing fights for 10 wins, 10 knockouts. Uh, with, the, with the kickboxing style, it's more uh, hand orientated, and, and I really believe that my my boxing skills have, have vastly improved since my 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 time in the boxing ring. So um, I'm quite happy to to stand and trade with my hands. Uh, I have my tie style from my waist down. I have my boxing style from my waist up. Um, when I put them together, uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting fit, believing in my cardio, and putting on exciting fights. I, 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 I'm not one of those guys that uh, are shy away. Uh, I like throwing um, pin punch combos and, and putting on uh, entertaining forms of violence for the fans. Well, you've always been very entertaining. As you talked about, you have that Muay Thai background, you have that boxing background, but also a very credited um, Taekwondo background dating back from the early 80s. So you really see in that style, I mean, you have so many different options, so many different varied attacks. On Saturday, April 8th, you'll be putting on those talents on back on display when you make your official Bellator debut against local Italian fighter Nando Calzetta. Have you been able to find much on him? Or at this point, you've had over 100 fights. Does it not really matter the name of the opponent in front of you? Uh, no, I've, I've definitely looked up um, Fernando on the YouTube. He has uh, a lot of big fights uh, to his credit. Um, he, he looks like he has a lot of power. So I just have to make sure that my, my defenses are working, my footwork's uh, on point, and uh, I'm, I'm, I can throw enough combinations to upset his rhythm, to, to take away his confidence from wanting to, to stand in front of me. Um, I, I believe I have a, a large variety of tools that could definitely upset him. So, and, and once I, I feel I have a roll on, I don't stop. So if something's, if I believe something's landing, I'll continue attacking 
and, until the job's done. Uh, and I believe in my cardio, so I know I can stand there for three minutes and, and throw non-stop as well. So, uh, And win, lose, or draw, as long as the crowd remember my fight, um, then I'm happy. So, yeah, it's all about it's all about getting the 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 crowd up on their feet and, and standing ovation. It's all about giving the crowd their money's worth. Absolutely. Now, does it add any added pressure? I mean, you come into this fight and you are, at the end of the day, you're the gunslinger, John Wayne Parr. You are someone who commands a lot of respect and someone who is a big name in the world of combat sports. Meanwhile, your opponent, you know, he's the local Italian fighter coming in here to kind of not be the B-side to you, but also you are the, the reason why the fight's getting a lot of attention. Does that add pressure to you? Do you feel like there's that element that you have to go out and perform to other people's expectations? Or at the end of the day, is this just a fight and you enjoy being in there? Uh, both. Um, I'm really excited to have my debut, but at the same time, I, I, I want to go out there and I have to prove not only to to the fans, but to, to Bellator and Scott Croker that they made a, uh, the correct choice in signing a, a someone of my age. Uh, it's unheard of to be 40 years old and, and get the opportunity to fight for such a good promotion. Um, yeah, so they really believe in me and I have to to follow up and, and to promise that they've made the, the correct decision of allowing me to, to put my skills uh, on display. Um, and I don't want to let anybody down. I want to just go out there and, and, and prove that I can still mix it with the, the 25 year old and, and win and dominate. Well, a four fight, currently a three fight winning streak, I believe. So you're definitely uh, still on the right path, still in fantastic shape. Now, I got to ask you, there's always been a little bit of a, a talk, always kind of on the back burner of, you know, potentially seeing you in the sport of MMA. We've seen that you've trained with MMA fighters in the background. You obviously still have a great relationship with a lot of coaches and competitors in the world of mixed martial arts. And we've even seen a lot of top kickboxers recently, guys like Robin Van Roosmullen, guys like Rigo Verhoeven, kind of trying their hand at MMA as well. Now that you're 40, now that you're already an accomplished kickboxer and a Muay Thai fighter, is that a chapter of your career that is probably closer? Is there still that option of, you know what, now that I'm signed with a company like Bellator, if the right fight was to present itself, I would still flatter a, a, an MMA fight? Uh, I think, I think no, I, I just want to stick to what I'm doing. Um, if I was 20, uh, 25, if I was 20, 25 years old, definitely I believe I'd, I could sacrifice a, a year or so on my back learning the jiu-jitsu skills and the wrestling skills. But at 40 years old, um, I just want to concentrate on, on, the hat, on my Muay Thai having fights back to back, just knowing that I have a paycheck coming in regularly. Uh, I, I can't afford to, to take a year off from the sport, otherwise the, the, the bills don't pay themselves. I have to make sure that I have a steady income um, coming in. And, and I'm very lucky with Bill they've signed me for three fights, so I, so I know for the next 12 months I'm going to be financially um, okay. So, yeah, it's just... Um, the the sport came along uh, a little bit too late in my career. Uh, plus, I love what I do. I love standing and striking. I love standing and banging with uh, my opponents. I, I think that's the most entertaining form of fighting on on this planet to this day. So, even even the the greatest MMA fights are the ones where they stand the whole time. So, it, it's just that the the crowd need to be educated and and need to be seen. We need the TV exposure and with the the likes of Bellator coming on board and giving us guys opportunities to shine. Hopefully we can show the crowd that we're, our fighting style is just as exciting, if not more so, um, than the MMA guys. Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you hear a lot of times from MMA fans when they're complaining about the ground game, they always kind of say at the end of the day, oh, I just I wish I saw the fighters trade, stand in and trade a little bit. But there's also this love for people seeing strikers with the MMA gloves, and there's also that love with seeing strikers compete in a cage. Your promotion, Cage Muay Thai, it offers exactly that. You surprisingly, it just maybe hasn't had the media attention with it quite yet. But you're putting two stand-up warriors in a cage with MMA gloves. It's pure chaos. You talk a lot about giving the fans that excitement delivering that the action that they paid money for this seems like the perfect avenue where do you see cage muay thai taking off in the next couple of years and what is something that that that, that fans need to realize about this uh at this stage we've done nine promotions so far uh and it's growing from strength to strength uh, i make sure that every promotion I'm, i try and get two or three different international uh, uh fighters from across the globe and then every time I get someone, for example, if I get someone from France, France is talking about the show. If I get someone from Holland, then Holland's talking about the show. So 
we're at the stage now where pretty much everyone, everybody knows knows what I'm doing with the cage and the CMT brand, um, and uh, it's 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 so raw and so exciting. The the, the small gloves, the MMA gloves, it, it opens up a whole new world where you could be winning the first four rounds quite convincingly, and one one mistake, and all of a sudden you're on your back looking at the the, the stadium lights, <laughs> uh, and then with the cage, it's just a different environment. It's so different to climbing the ropes in a ring. When you hear that cage, cage door close, all of a sudden you feel like you're in the Coliseum and there's no escape. It's just you and your opponent and only one of you are going to leave successfully. So, um, I'm really excited with the direction that the cage my toy is going. Uh, majority of it is um, finance through my own pocket. So I'll have a few fights and then um, I pay for it myself. So sometimes uh, I fight the main event and if we don't get enough crowd through the door, Sometimes I have to take a hit, a hit and, and actually cost you money to put the show on instead of actually making any money. Uh, but that's what I'm willing to do because I really believe in my brand and I, I really believe once people see it, um, they'll, they'll love it. It's just the exposure. I just need the exposure to, to show the fans that this is the, the next generation. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That fight with Jordan Ty, I believe, in the first one, uh, talk about a nasty finish on a fight and just pure excitement, pure entertainment, obviously something that yeah. fans are going to gravitate towards. The more that you get that exposure, the more that you, you get people to tune in, once they see it, you have to assume, I mean, this is a beautiful sport and what a beautiful setting that you've created for them. Uh, and then what happens is we'll, we'll put a lot of the fights on YouTube, but... Um uh, watching it on TV and watching it on the computer, it just doesn't do it justice. You have to be in the crowd to, to feel the energy in the room. Uh, why are the fights are happening? No one can look at their phone or no one can talk to their friend because at any given second, um, something spectacular could happen. So all, all eyes are transfixed on the, on the cage. They can't look away. It's the most um, craziest atmosphere that you could possibly uh, be amongst. Even as a... If I'm fighting the main event, I watch the first four or five fights, and I don't want to go into the change room. Even from the first fight to the last fight, the the amateur guys that are fighting at the start of the night, even though their skill level isn't at the the greatest, they're still fighting with with so much uh, heart and so much uh, tenacity that you can't look away. They they're just they're, because they know the gloves are so small. At any given day, something crazy could happen. So they're just throwing everything 100 percent power. It's um breathtaking it's very it's very exciting well it's incredible especially when you take a lot of these guys are muay thai practitioners and coming from that muay thai base i mean a lot of these guys are used to fighting for hardly no money but for the love of the sport they go in there and they they, they appreciate that yeah. violence they appreciate the beauty and they deliver it all on the line and just you being able to give these guys a platform has been fantastic but for fans that have ever seen the gunslinger john Wayne Parr, they know that he always delivers excitement so just imagine that if you're listening to this right now just imagine and we're definitely showing viz as we're talking about this Imagine John Wayne Parr in Cage Muay Thai. I assure you, it is something worth watching. If you do want to see the Gunslinger back in action, you could do so. Beltor 176. It is going down April 8th. I assure you, you do not want to miss this. He is truly, in every sense of the word, a legend of the sport of Muay Thai and potentially soon to be a legend in the sport of kickboxing if he can tie a successful run together. John, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Mate, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been great chatting.